Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today with another little quick and easy pocket. Uh, it's not quite as quick as yesterday's, but I think it's equally as cute. So this one I found on the 5 Minutes Craft Challenge, challenge channel. Uh, it was a few years old this video and it was actually how to make a wallet to keep your money and credit cards in out of a paper bag. Uh, so yeah. You don't need to use a paper bag. All they did is cut a rectangle off front of a paper bag and use it. But you can use a paper bag if that's where you're going to get, if you want to do it craft coloured, and that's where you're going to get your craft card or paper from. I happen to have some of this craft paper, which is about, I'd say about 110 GSM, and it worked out quite well for this. So that's what I'm going to use. I'll go ahead and show it you. I've put a little a string belly band, should we call it? You don't need to untie it, you can just slide it on and off. And you open it up and inside we've got two little journal cards. I've used a paper from 13 Arts that was gifted to me by the lovely Deborah. Yeah, it's like postcards and writing and yeah, postal theme paper. So we've got two cards there. We've then got one there, one there. You can still take those out even when your little string belly bands on. I've just staggered the tabs on those because I thought it looked cute. And then, if we open it up and have a look in the top, you can put more ephemera in. I've just put some paper ephemera in because I've made it look a bit like money. Yeah, I don't mind that it's got creased because I don't mind. Money gets creased in your wallet, don't it? So it's just a little receipt and a little ticket. And then I've popped a little postcard in. I just thought that was ever so cute. So I'll put those back in. Yeah, and this is all done from one piece of paper. I've chosen to use an A4 piece. So, that's it. Let's crack on, show you how it's done. Right, if you're using pattern paper, uh, I haven't off stamped, as you could see. Start with the pattern on your paper face down. I'm using this craft, as I've said. So, face down. First thing you want to do is fold your paper in half. So we work, this will be working with the pattern towards you. I did my stamping after. If I could work out exactly where to put the stamping before I folded, I would. Now take the edges and bring those into the centre. Just short of the fold is best. It will prevent any little problems later down the line. I can't fold from the left, so I'm going to turn mine round. So there we go. Then fold it in half again, lengthways. You want to put creases in these, definite creases. I don't think it's necessary to use a bone folder. In fact, leave it while the end when it's all put together to do the bone folding. It just seems to work out that little bit better. So we've now got it to that point, yeah? Now get this piece and bring it over Bring the right edge over to the first crease line that you've made vertically. Yeah. We don't want a really definite crease in that. Just enough. And then bring the top down to the bottom. And then what we want to do is we're going to cut that corner off to make that little opening inside. I've got a prototype here, yeah. We're making that opening there, and we do that by cutting off this corner. So I'll take my scissors to it. I stop just short of the crease. There we go. So then when we open it up again, we have that. Yeah? You could at this point go ahead and do your stamping, because we know we need to stamp that part and that part. But for today, I'm just going to show you how to make the pocket. So, bring it back to pattern side face down onto your paper, onto your desk. Right. Yeah, we need to do some scoring and snipping now. You don't have to score. If you are confident in turning this whole edge over about a quarter of an inch and getting it straight, crack on. I can't. <laughs> so I'm going to use my score tool and ruler to help me do this. I'll turn it this way as well because I cannot do it horizontally. So I just want, you'll not, I'm, I'm not all on the screen, but 
don't matter. This is just going to help me fold it over. I've just got my, it's an embossing tool I use. Use, use your scoreboard if you want. I just can't be bothered to get mine out for one score line. And I know not everyone's got one, have they? So this one wants to be roughly the same, well it wants to be the same size as other. If it's not perfect, the world is not going to end, as I like to say. So there we have that. So we're still working pattern side down. That just gives me a little line to help me fold it. It's not... And then fold these edges over. It's not important how deep this is. All that will do, if you, however deep you do it, will depend on that width there. So don't worry if you've folded it over less than me, although you might find the next part a bit tricky if it's less than this. If it's more, not a problem. Right, then before we do anything else, you can see mine's folded a little bit wonky, but it'll sort itself out as we go along. It so will. Now just bring it back and want to do a little bit of snipping. I'm going to use my tiny scissors for this so I can be a bit more precise. I've lost my middle size seven inch ones again. Now you want to snip along every one of these creases up to that little score line. Not that one. <laughs> that one. And that one. And turn around and do the same again. Snip. Snip. I don't know why I'm saying snip out loud. Snip. Snip, snip, snip. Alright, there we go. Now we're going to do a bit more folding. So. Right, fold all these down apart from that one. There we go. Now you can glue them. I think it just makes it so much easier if you do glue them. It will work without. How, how long it will last, I don't know. This is the five minutes craft one. Didn't use any glue and it didn't use... It wasn't very precise and it probably would have lasted well end of day. But the five minute crafts aren't they? We want ours to last a bit longer than five minutes. So I'm going to glue all these little flaps down apart from the one where the window is. Yeah, I'm just using my scotch glue stick. these oh, I should have a wee wee I do, do you know I do that often without knowing I'm doing it that wee sound very strange lady I am oh, it's not it's not the stickiest stickiest glue stick in the world that one it'll do us oh you just go there and stay there so we've got those glued down I'm just gonna come in now and do a little bit of a snipping just to relieve release well relieve any pressure or not pressure as we fold it there it'll be a little bit awkward if we don't have those i just found this easier to cut these after i'd stuck them down because we're only working with paper at the end of the day aren't we yeah and this one as well you could do this before personal preference i just found it a little bit easier after it were already stuck and exactly where I were cutting to because that folds there. Right to hell that one. Go on, stick down. And this. I found this much easier to do when I went trying to keep it in <laughs> camera. I tend to craft right up under my nose when I'm not filming. Right, now we're going to do some folding. So Fold that bit in there, so we've still got the window at the top. So that one's fold in there. That one's fold in there, yeah. So we've got this shape. Then bring that up, 
which is where the magic happens so now we've that's going to be the inside now you see these little flaps we've got sticking out I hope you can see this we want to tuck that into there yeah and that's what's going to hold the whole thing together and I'm going to use a little bit of art glitter glue on this I don't want to trust glue stick holding that it's fine holding a little flap of paper down but holding the body of the thing together this is where I want to use my art glitter and this is why I said if you make the little gap on the side smaller than me it could be a bit tricky I think I've made it a different size every time I've made one so we then need to fold that in there if art glitter doesn't give you enough wiggle time use a different glue but you don't want an instant grab wet glue there we go that's that I've not got that perfect but I can live with it I'm getting much more uh, tolerant to things not being absolutely perfectly lined up right then I'm going to tuck that one in this side doesn't want to behave as well as the other side did no idea why couldn't tell you there we go it seems to be in now yeah art glitter gives you a smidgen of wiggle time then now this is the point where I go around with my bone folder and make everything permanent yeah then when you fold that up you've got your little pocket I absolutely love this there we go see mine's let's just mine's not completely 100% square so I'll just line my edges up and recrease my centre and that's fixed that and there we have it and inside we've got that little wallet thing so I am just going to carry on and do my stamping because I've got them all out so now you know how to make the bare bones of the thing and yeah I hope you find that I just found that quite yeah quite amazing I'm using my field notes stamps again because they're my favourite stamps of the moment and I'm just randomly going to stamp using my coffee ranger ink I like to throw things about me don't I get a bit violent so I think I want that there I might want one on inside so I'll do it now yeah, can you see what I meant about if I could work out which bits to stamp before I started a wood? But before you glue it together, it becomes quite clear which bits to stamp once you've cut these little holes, doesn't it? So there we go. I think I'll have the this side up one on the front of this. Yeah, this side up. We know it's that side up now. We won't get it upside down. And... We've even got one going sideways there that's a bit novel for me isn't it i tend to want to line everything up so yeah you could make these out of you could make them out of anything you really could um i'd be wary of making it from anything that's too thick because all this folding it might just pucker up and bunch up too much anything too thin and i don't think it would be sturdy enough so this 110 GSM seems to be working pretty well for me. If you have got lots and lots of spare paper bags and no brown craft paper, go ahead and use that for it. I happen to have more craft paper than I do paper bags. So that's why I've done mine like that. And I do like my random stamping better when I'm talking. It becomes more random. <laughs> that makes any sense whatsoever so even even when I'm not making a video I think I just need to talk to myself when I'm stamping so ooh, what does that one say shipment collect I think we'll have that inside yeah and I 
think a couple more. I'm just randomly grabbing these. They're my absolute favourite stamp set of the moment. I don't know what I'd be making if I didn't have these. A mess, probably. Let's have you there. So that's enough on the inside. I think I want something botanical. Just a smidge of on this front one. So what have we got? We've used the flower and the butterfly. I'm just going to use the bird. Just a little bit of that bird top, I think. Oh, there. Oh, I shouldn't have really. I'm going to do it there. There you go. Don't matter that I've got that going over that. I can live with that. I only need something in that little hole there. I think I want another round one. Postage mark. Yeah, I think I like that. Just had to put one more in, didn't I? <laughs> That's me. That I'm happy with. Then we're going to ink all around the edges. I'm using my vintage photo for a change. I usually like the look of walnut stain, but I think this vintage photo goes better with the Ranger Coffee archival ink. It really does. There we go. I'm now a new fan of speed inking. It looks more natural. And this that I learnt from Melina, I can't believe I never did it before. Just inking that centre part, that one didn't really want to fold. I'm just going to pop that out like so, just to ink these edges. I mean, you could put something on these edges to strengthen them a little bit more, but I think this should be fine. I'm going to make my journal cards with exactly the same paper that I used for my other one. Then we'll have a cute little set. So this is the paper. I've got one card made actually. When I made my first one, I stuck that in the middle. Then I thought, oh, how cute would that look if I staggered them? So I'll just use that one this time. Now, depending on the size of your pockets, is going to depend on the size you want to cut your cards to. How I decide that is, I measure the width and the depth and I make my card a quarter or an eighth of an inch smaller either way. Yep. So I'm not going to give you sizes for the cards. Well I will actually because if you do start with an A4 piece of card, a little bit the same size as mine. That is two and three quarters by three and a half. I'm going to take my corner rounder Chomp some corners off. I know I didn't do any decorating of anything yesterday. It really just was a quick video. And I'm really amazed how well it's done. Really amazed. So thank you very much to everyone. And any new subscribers that have come to me through that. I do tend to do a mixture of quick projects, long, just all sorts. I do whatever I feel like doing. <laughs> now the tabs I have made using my We Are Memory Keepers tab punch, yeah, I've then inked around the edges, let's have a bit more ink, and then I've just stamped them, I used one of the larger field notes stamped, I think I used this label one, just so it matched the little folder, and I just... There you go, I think it just added something. Don't know what it added, but it was definitely something. So there we go. I think I need a bit more ink on that. And I've attached that using my art glitter glue. Which way? That way. I'll have these both going in the same place. Wouldn't do for everything to be the same, would it? So as you can see, that pops in there perfectly. Open it up. The interior ones I did slightly smaller. I shall just check. Because I didn't want to put too much stress on those corners. And these measured two and a half by 
three and a quarter yeah so just cut two pieces two and a half by three and a quarter for the inside and you will be done I'm not going to show you how to do that you know how to cut a piece of card two and a half by three and a quarters I'm quite sure and then we we'll just finish it off by grabbing a piece of twine I've used three ply jute twine for this one because it is it, there's a lot of stuff in them isn't it they're not going to lie completely flat and when I've tied my bow if you slide it on from that narrower end you won't need to untie it again tie it once and it is done right. little snip and there we have it another little pocket so I really hope you enjoyed that like I said not quite as quick as yesterday's but I think you'll agree that is still pretty quick and easy so thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.